what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new x86 single board computer from the creator of the original Zima board this is the Zima blade and it was recently up on crowd supply base model actually only goes for $64 and I'm really interested to see how this thing performs so basically what we have here is an Intel powered x86 single board computer you add your own RAM with this. We do have built-in eMMC storage, and they're offering three different CPU variants. I'll leave a link to their website in the description, but one of the most interesting things here is we have a PCIe slot. Now, it's a PCIe 2.0 X4 slot, but we can add a ton of different peripherals to this, like extra USB. We can add an M.2 adapter or more SATA drives, network cards, and even a GPU. Now remember, this is PCIe 2.0 X4, so if you did connect a GPU, it's not going to run at full speed, but it's totally possible to connect it to this slot. And along with the PCIe interface, over here on this side, we've actually got two SATA 3.0 6 gig ports. Moving over to the other side, mini display port 1.2. This will do 4K 60 out. Gigabit Ethernet, we also have a full-size USB 3.0 port and USB Type-C. This will transfer power, data, and display, so it's full-function USB-C. Personally, I think the board itself looks really good inside of this case, and it's totally passively cooled by the metal case that comes included with it. Now, one thing that kind of threw me off here was actually the RAM we're going to utilize, because initially, I was under the impression that we'd be using DDR4 here, Unfortunately, it's only DDR3, and they did this to keep the cost down because DDR3 is really cheap right now, used on eBay, and this will support up to 16 gigs. When it comes to the specs of the Zima board, they're actually offering two different variants right now at the time of making this video, but we've got the higher-end variant with the quad-core Intel Celeron J3455. It's got a boost up to 2.3 gigahertz, Intel 500 HD graphics with 12 execution units, and it'll run it up to 750 megahertz. We can do up to 16 gigabytes of single channel DDR3. It's got 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in with Casa OS Linux pre-installed, but we could go with Windows or another variant of Linux. And in this video, we're going to take a quick look at Casa OS because we already tested that on the original Zima board. I'm just going to install Ubuntu right on this thing and see what we can do with it. And they're marketing this thing as a single board server, which it would work out great for given the lower specs here, low power draw. But I wanted to see if we could use this as an everyday x86 SVC for emulation, a little bit of gaming, some web browsing and video playback. If you're interested in checking out what this thing can do as a server, I would highly recommend heading over to Nova Spirit Text YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Check out his review. He's going to go over a lot of different things that I won't in this video. So accessing the Zima board with Casa OS installed from any other PC is actually really simple. You're just going to open up a browser, type in your IP as long as you're on the same network. And if you set everything up correctly, you can access this remotely. I've just got it set up on my home network. It just makes it a lot easier to get into. And uh, right now I'm just connected from another PC. Really nice little interface. Gives us our RAM usage, CPU usage. It'll also show us the wattage and Celsius here. Widget settings, we can go ahead and disable some of these if we don't want to see them. And we can remotely install different applications directly from here. Going into our files, we've got our downloads. You can set up different directories if you need to. Basically, we're just kind of jacked in to this over network. And if I've got anything on the Zima board, be it on the internal eMMC, an M.2 over that PCIe slot, or even SATA drives connected, I can access it from here very easily. Really like the interface, super easy to use. We've got tons of different applications that we can install and use if we need to. All the information we need is on screen at any given time. And this is actually really awesome. They've set this up very nicely. I'm actually starting to enjoy using Casa OS. Like I mentioned, this operating system comes pre-installed on the MMC storage, but I actually just went ahead and wiped it after a little while and installed Ubuntu because we've taken a look at Casa OS on the original Zima board. I just wanted to check out Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop on this thing. Okay, so I just went through and wiped the MMC. I've installed Ubuntu 22.04. But Casa OS is pre-installed on top of Debian, you know, right out of the box. I just really wanted to check out Ubuntu here. And uh, overall, it's actually a lot faster than I thought it would be. Now, the main drawback here is going to be the chipset they opted to use. It's the 3455, so it's an older Intel chip. But for a lighter operating system, it's actually not that bad. Now, I wouldn't suggest using GNOME. There is a little bit of stutter here and there with this uh, desktop interface. 
You could go with LXDE or something like that to lighten it up a bit, but it's not too bad. So with this setup here, I just went through, I installed a few things that we're gonna be testing out, but one of the main things I wanted to see was just some web browsing and video playback from YouTube. I am on ethernet, we don't have built-in Wi-Fi. So we'll just head over to their website here. Nothing's gonna be fast forwarded. This is gonna be real time, just so we can get a feel for how this thing performs. And yeah, it actually loads up pretty quick. Let's uh, head over to the order now page. So the base model of this board is $64. And with that, it actually has a dual core Intel CPU. You can still add up to 16 gigabytes of DDR3. For the one we're taking a look at, it's actually 96 and $8 shipping there. Still not too bad for uh, what we're getting here. Let's check out some YouTube video playback. And yeah, it did take a second to get everything populated. Lots of images here. And we'll go with a good old Linux test here. Okay, so we'll go to stats for nerds. Already got a few drop frames there. Make sure we are at 1080. So we'll go to 720 to reset that. 1080. 1080. 60. And we'll see what happens. So Stats for Nerds is listed on screen and we already got a few drop frames. Unfortunately, even with hardware acceleration in Chrome enabled, looks like this little chip is struggling with 1080p 60. It's not as bad as some little x86 boards on the market right now, but it would be nice to have a nice steady 60fps 1080 with this setup. Next thing I wanted to test here was Open Arena. Now I usually test this on lower end x86 boards. We'll just go with the demo. FPS should be up in the top right hand corner. And just to put this into perspective for you, the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 runs this at about 41 FPS, the same exact test. The Raspberry Pi 5 did hit 60, but with this, I think it might be locked at 90 FPS for some odd reason. I don't think we're gonna go over that. But it looks like in some cases, it could definitely go over. Yeah, I think it's locked right there at 90. Either way, it's very playable on this machine. And I kind of suspected it would be. We've got a much more powerful chip than the ARM chip in the Raspberry Pi 4. And like I mentioned, that runs it at 41 FPS. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be testing out here is some emulation. I've got some PSP and some GameCube. If this works out, I was actually thinking about installing just a retro operating system on this, like Batocera. Let's go with PSP. Let's see if we can get this full screen. And the first one we're going to be testing here is Ratchet and Clank. With this, I'm going to go to 2x resolution. We're using the Vulcan back end. No frame skip or anything like that. And this is one of those games that ran natively at 30 FPS. Kind of thought we'd have some good performance with this. We even might be able to go up to 3x with these type of games. You know, this one is a bit easier to run. And it does look pretty decent at 2x. But of course, when it comes to PSP emulation on any single board computer, there is one game that really struggles on a lot of the lower end stuff, and that's going to be God of War Chains of Olympus. Vulcan back in, and with Ratchet and Clank, we were at 2x resolution. I had to drop this down to 1x to get it to run at full speed. No hacks again, just like that first game we tested, but we're at a steady 60. I saw it dip down to 58 in one case, and that was just kind of a stutter there. But when it comes to PSP emulation on this little board, it actually functions very, very well. And the final thing I wanted to test here was the Dolphin emulator for some GameCube, but unfortunately it looks like the development PPA isn't available, uh, at least for 22.04 Ubuntu. 
and um, I have to rely on this older 5.0 version. And with this, we only have access to OpenGL, so performance isn't going to be great here. I can go with the newer version on a different distro, and uh, you know, checking out a retro emulation operating system for this would actually be really awesome. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know. But let's get in here. And it looks like I also lost sound here. Not getting great performance. We're at the native resolution. And I know a newer version would definitely help out. I mean, this version is, I think, a couple years old now. So obviously, with all of the updates they've done, we could definitely see some good performance. But unfortunately, I'm just not really going to be able to test Dolphin to its full potential in this video. But just seeing how this older version runs, we could probably do some of these easier to emulate games with the newer version at full speed. The final thing I wanted to talk about here was total system power consumption. So while running all of these tests, I had this plugged into a kilowatt meter. And at idle, it only pulls 4 watts with the operating system I'm using. Gaming and 1080p playback, it jumps up to 10, actually 9.8. And the maximum that I saw this draw from the wall was 13 watts. Now keep in mind, I don't have any SATA drives or PCIe connected to this. It could probably pull more, but the way it sits right now, it's a very low power consumption mini PC. So in the end, the Zima Blade actually performed much better than I thought it was gonna. Now it would be nice to have a more powerful CPU and uh, utilize DDR4 here, but this is what we have for $96 on the one we tested here. Or you could go with the lower end dual core version for 64 there's a few more things I'd like to test on this, like adding a GPU over that PCIe slot. And if that's something you'd like to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. But if you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links to their official website in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Definitely stay tuned to the channel because I will have a little more coming with this. And like always, thanks for watching.